Je, ni kweli kwamba uki ukiacha ukeketaji na mila zote zitakuwa zimekufa? Ah? Sio kweli. Sasa kwa kwa Lakini ya mbaya ikapitia. Eh. Hebu semeni wata namna hiyo. How many of you would like to go through the cutting? Ni nani? Sebuse mbeni wata sauti moja? Nobody. Nobody. Salam alaikum. Anaga gudning farak no malah. Gudning wa gudning. Ilahi hurintan u aburai. O u shaka u aburai. Between a hundred and a hundred and forty million girls and women, mostly in Africa, in um, twenty eight countries of Africa have undergone genital mutilation. The good news is that there is now a movement of um, uh, grassroots activism. <laughs> People now have moved a little bit beyond the cultural practice to seeing FGM as a major human rights abuse. I was 14 years old, my father decided me to be married off. I told him no, because I want to continue with my education. They beat me, they have removed me all the clothes, and they beat me nakedly. I ran, I ran, I ran, but they got me on the way when I am running away. I cry, but nobody was there in the forest. I cry, but I don't have anybody to turn to. They beat me the same day and they take me to their husband's home. In 1999, these girls were now started now running one, 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 one. Then I saw that there was a problem because we needed a place where these girls could go to. And we got the idea of having a small place, a temporary place, where these girls can call their home. When you talk about female genital mutilation, first we have to start from early marriage. Some families, when they give birth to five daughters, they start thinking, now we are rich. Because for every girl, if you are going to have five cows, and if we have five daughters, then by the end of the day, 
this family will have 25 cows. Na sasa ulikuwa umejua umekuwa umejua ulijuaje tasa shule moja. Eh sasa nikajua tu hata nyinyi kienda huko nitapata usaidizi. Na wakati uli tayari hakukwambia unajua kimasai mtoto akitairishwa unapeana immediately. Unajua hapo hata hakuna mtu mwenye alikuja kunitafuta. Sasa wale wazee wengine wa ndugu za baba yangu wakaenda kumwambia wakaenda kumuita huyo mzee. Sasa baba mimi nilikuwa nilikuwa nakuja kumwaga maji nje nikamsalimia huyo mzee. Kaniambia huyu unamuona hapa ndiye nitakupatia. Kwa ni mzee kabisa ama ni kijana tu. Ni kama huyu. Sasa mimi nikamwambia sasa akaniambia usipotaka huyu mwenye nakupatia utafute tu mahali pa kwenda nisikukute. Hapa. Alikuwa serious kabisa. Sasa mimi nikamwambia sitaki nataka kusoma. Akakataa kabisa. One of the um, campaigning strategy that um, the activists on the grounds are using is to convince the families that, look, you're going to take the child out of the school and she, you just get this bride price now, and that um, is finished. But if you allow your, your daughter to go through school and get an education and get a profession, that bride price that you want, she can give it to you um, a hundred times. Manager Gununo? Yeah. Circumcision is the cutting of the cutting of the clitoris. Sindio? Kita joda or a number of that do we number one, you just sooner. Na it munya galugunyur mugu. Nana? In, a, in the removal of the clitoris, the labia majora, the outer part of it and the inner part of it. Sao sawa? Tunailawana? Nea thai type 3. Type 3 is infibulation. Alafu, what happens? What is infibulation? Infibulation involves the cutting of the clitoris. There is a major difference between male circumcision and female genital mutilation. You see, the male organ, the penis, is the same biologically as the, um, the clitoris in the female. Um, in the male, you remove just the hood around the, 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 the penis. You do not damage the organ itself. In the female, you remove the clitoris, and the equivalent of that being done for the male would be to amputate the the um, the main organ, either partially or totally. A manager, I know do you ship a murati in Tito? Nikwasa Babugani to Nafania to Hara. Nikwasa Babugani, Nambio. You get a little bit of a little they believe it is the cutting that prepares the girl to be a woman, but it's not. It is the teachings of the mother counseling the daughter in preparedness for marriage. After Saru, we bring these girls into a five-day seclusion to come and discuss all the topics. You need to be clean, you'll have menstruation, and menstruation comes along with pregnancy, and the girls can, be, can ask the godmothers questions that they think they want to understand. So that as these girls grow, they will not look like they don't know the culture. They will know the culture, but have not gone through the real cutting. A 
I'm a human rights uh, activist. I work with the Center for Human Rights and Democracy. It was the end of November, the year 2000, and uh, two girls walked into my office. These girls were two sisters, Edna and, uh, and Beatrice, and uh, they needed help. The problem was um, that their uh, father has given notice that they were going to be circumcised. That's when I discovered that there was no specific law on FGM. A good Samaritan came to our site and they took us to the Office for Human Rights and Democracy in Eldoret. I thought that uh, the only way I could help them was to take the matter to court and perhaps look for a protection order from a magistrate. At the beginning, my father was very hostile because we took him to court. It was the first time we met Easter in Kenya by telling our father to court to stop us from being circumcised. At one point, uh, we had uh, Alice, who ran away in 2002. Alice was inspired by the Candia case. This is Alice Chero which I came to know Alice through um, me medias, news, like newspaper, when she went to court, stopping her mother from being circumcising her. When I went to Center of Human Rights, I was 17 years old, and now I'm 23 years old. For the case of Alice, uh, she had been running away every circumcision season because her mother was determined. Her mother was a circumciser and actually the chair lady of the circumcision committee, committee of circumcisers. She was very annoyed, but after court, she knew that she was doing the wrong thing. And now she's, she has changed. She's a good mother. This case influenced a lot, because at that time, the children's bill uh, had been drafted and discussions had begun, lobbying was being done, and this case contributed a lot in, in making sure that uh, the children act included FGM as one of the uh, issues to be addressed. When I was doing it alone, there was no law, and there was no any other way that we could get the people other than visiting them in their home areas and doing the school visits, talking to the girls, and walking from village to village, educating the community. The chief of Melelo called me and said that there was a conversation going on in that village. So when we went to rescue these girls, we rescued these girls on that last day when they were going to be cut. When we brought the case to court, the, the father was fined 20,000 shillings. Because in the Children's Act, the Act says that if you are going to break this law, you are going to be in for one year or pay 
a fine of not more than 50,000 shillings. When the girls are here, they are safe. Yeah, we, I went back home. My mother said, said we go back because there is no problem. All of a sudden, he just came and woke up, 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 wake us up, and then he told us, today we're going to be circumcised. I told them, four years ago I refused this. My brother started beating me. He beat me and beat me, and then the men catch me and tie me up, and then they circumcise me, and then do the same to my sister. This is a struggle. It's a struggle like we struggled against apartheid or we struggled against slavery. FGM is in the same format, only it, that this is happening to women. And it's a long struggle because um, this is to do with social change, but the change is happening. <laughs> We identify the circumcisers. And why we do that is because we think these are the people who perform it. <laughs> when we talk to the circumcisers, we tell them that they risk having HIV AIDS because they use their naked hands when they are cutting these girls. And if one has the virus, then that virus can be transmitted from the girl to the circumciser. Yeah. <laughs> People are starting to react, and this lady is just now trying to explain that she's a circumciser. Nigeri <laughs> 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 Circumcisers have changed their mind and have agreed to stop, to lay off their knives and do some other work. And in doing so, they can earn a living that is equally the same as that that they were earning when they were still performing the cut. Yes, 
The good news about eradicating FGM is that women will live a healthy life and the girls will have a chance to go to school and be important people. And by the end of us maybe educating these people and them agreeing to stop, our community will be will benefit like other communities. And people, women, will be empowered to make their own informed decisions.